are connected to GEICO Sportsnet Central. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to GEICO Sportsnet Central. I'm Max Grossfeld. We've got a full slate of Week 3 college football action to get to tonight. First up, the Hokies, who should have no problem against East Carolina, right? After all, the Pirates are unranked, and this is the same Virginia Tech team who just seven days ago went into the horseshoe and stomped Ohio State. 17th ranked Hokies taking the field at Lane Stadium, nearly unbeatable at home, especially against non-conference foes. Opening drive, second and goal for ECU. Shane Carden finds Bryce Williams in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Pirates take an early 7-0 lead. 14-0 now, still in the first. Carden finds Isaiah Jones. He reaches over the line for the touchdown. 21-0 Pirates. Same score, second quarter. Hokies trying to get on the board. Michael Brewer finds a diving Isaiah Ford. An amazing catch. Here it is in the end zone. Replays hint that it may be incomplete, but after review, look at that. The play stands. 21-7 ECU. Skip ahead to the fourth now. Brewer again finds Ford in the end zone. Wide open for the touchdown. Hokies a touchdown away from the tie. One minute, 20 seconds left in the game. Brewer completes to true freshman. Cam Phillips for the touchdown, and just like that, we're tied at 21. Under a minute left now. Pirates fighting for the win. Carden completes to Cam Worthy. He gets loose for the 28-yard gain inside the five. That sets them up for the victory. 16 seconds left in the game now. Carden takes it himself in for the one-yard touchdown, his fourth of the game. ECU upsets Virginia Tech 28-21. Carden becomes the first East Carolina QB to win in Blacksburg since 1991. Virginia now hosting 21st ranked Louisville in Charlottesville this afternoon. Start of the end of the first half. Cardinals going for the last second heave gets deflected and falls incomplete, but the play does not end there. A scuffle breaks out right where teams exit the field. So now everyone is in on the action, flags everywhere, sets up for a great second half. Third quarter now, Grayson Lambert keeps the ball on the read option, gets a block from his fullback and strolls into the end zone. Who's up 17 to seven? Skip to the fourth. Louisville down six in the red zone. Will Gardner's pass is intercepted, but wait, flags thrown for roughing the passer. Take another look at this. Possession will remain with the Cardinals. Next play, Gardner. Play action goes over the middle to James Quick for the score. Extra point gives the Cards the lead. A little later, Virginia punting now, and it's muffed. Cavaliers recover for the orange and blue with five minutes left to play. That sets up this field goal try from 42 yards out. It's true off the foot of Ian Fry. Virginia upsets Louisville 23-21, your final. For years, West Virginia owned Maryland, beating the Terps eight straight times until 2013. Maryland stomped all over the Mountaineers in Baltimore, 37 to nothing. You can rest assured that West Virginia has not forgotten that beatdown, and they were out for revenge in College Park. Maryland donning new uniforms commemorating the Battle of Baltimore. Picked this up in the second quarter. Route appeared to be on in College Park. Clint Trickett to Kevin Wright. He does the rest. 44-yard catch and run. Mountaineers up 21-3. Terps will eventually wake up. C.J. Brown trying to bounce back from a tough game. This will do the trick. Finds a wide open. Stefan Diggs. He cruises 77 yards to the house. Terps will trail 28-20 at the half. Third quarter, what can Brown do for you? The sixth-year Maryland quarterback keeps the ball in the option, sheds a tackle, and shows some wheels. Caps his 75-yard run with a stiff arm. Brings the Maryland to within a point. Crowd loving what they're seeing, but the Terp faithful didn't like seeing this. Mountaineers block Nathan Renfro's punt. Ball bounces out of the end zone for a safety. West Virginia adds a touchdown. Now they're up 10. To the fourth, Maryland special teams would make amends. West Virginia's turn to punt. William likely fields it. An opening with one man to beat badly jukes the punter. 
Likely goes 69 yards on the return, knots the game at 37. Mountaineers try to answer. Josh Lambert attempting to go ahead field goal, but Darius Kilgo gets through and blocks it. Score remains tied, but Maryland's offense would be unable to capitalize. West Virginia gets another crack at the game winner. Lambert converts this one as time expires. The Turks drop their first game of the season in heartbreaking fashion. 40 to 37 is your final. To the NFL, it's been a rough week for the NFL, and in particular, Roger Goodell. But while Goodell may have had many in the public calling for his job, he does have his supporters, including Redskins owner Daniel Snyder. In a statement released this morning, Snyder said Roger Goodell has always had the best interests of football at heart, both on and off the field. We are fortunate to have him as our commissioner. The entire Redskins Washington organization strongly endorses his efforts to eradicate domestic abuse and the independent investigation into the Ray Rice assault. As for Snyder's team, they face their second straight AFC South opponent. Of course, they're looking for a better result than last Sunday when turnovers, bad special teams, and penalties cost them a chance to get head coach Jay Gruden his first NFL win. They get a chance tomorrow afternoon against the Jaguars in their home opener. Don't forget, we've got all your pregame coverage tomorrow at noon. The award-winning Redskins kickoff with Chick Hernandez, Brian Mitchell, Trevor Maddich, Rob, and Tarek. News, information, and analysis you can't get anywhere else. Still to come, the Orioles have owned the Yankees this season, winning 11 of the first 14 games from the boys against the Bronx. We'll tell you how much closer to a win would put them to clinching the AL East. And training camp may be coming up later this month, but we'll tell you why John Wall had another camp on his mind this morning.